What's up, everyone? So we have already taken three days off from doing number three problems. So today I would like to make a video and it is about a number theory problem again. So let's jump back into number theory. And this is actually something that is quite classical and also um, I would say kind of like a fundamental problem in number theory. Also, it is pretty often to be seen in, uh, in the homework from number, uh, an introduction of number theory class. So here we go. We want to prove that for all integers n, the expression n to the seventh power minus n is a multiple of 42. In other words, um, we want to show that 42 is a factor of n to the seventh power minus n. How are we going to do it? Well, before we actually start the proof, uh, I would like to jump into the next board and show you guys something. So, before we move on to the actual proof, I would like to introduce a few more advanced tools in number theory to help us finish our proof. First, let's introduce uh, the following theorem called the Fermat's Little Theorem, and do not make mistakes between this theorem and the Fermat's Last Theorem, which is saying a to n power plus b to n power equals c to n power, something like that. This little theorem says the following, let p be a prime number, then for all integers n, we claim that n to the p power is always congruent to n in mod p. In particular, if we can get p is not a factor of n, in other words, the GCD of n and p is equal to 1, and again, since p is prime, this is the only way, then we get n raised to the p minus 1 power is always congruent to 1 mod p. Well, it's very easy to check because we just divide n on both sides. So if n is not uh, a multiple of p, it's not congruent to zero. So we will be allowed to do, uh, do also called division. And the actual proof of it is actually quite long. So I'm not going to explain how we can prove this theorem. Believe me, we're just assuming that this is true in, in this video. Later on, I'll try to make a, another video to prove why this is true. Anyway, good. Then. I'll be, uh, also introduce two extra info well yeah extra information uh, mm, that is falling from the Fermat's little theorem. First, I'd like to talk about the Euler's Toshian function, also known as Euler's phi function, because we denote it with phi of n, and this is the Greek letter phi in lowercase. And how do we define this phi function? Well, this is how we define it. Phi of n is equal to the number of natural numbers that is less than or equal to n. In other words, we'll take the all the positive integers between 1 to n, including both numbers, such that the number k and our, uh, our largest value n has a GCD equal to 1. In other words, they uh, are co-prime, or known as relatively prime, to each other. And that's also the reason why we, mm, we are okay to say that we just take the natural numbers, okay? And of course, we can just use the counting method to, uh, to find out the value of v of n, if n is small enough, and if n gets bigger, we will be able to generalize it with um, uh, another expression so that we don't have to count all the numbers that is less than or equal to n, and we'll still be able to get the answer. So with the Euler's Toshian function, we can now make a, gen um, make a general result of Fermat's little theorem, which is the following corollary. It says for all integers n and, and uh, if we have the GCD of n and m equals 1, where m is something that we're going to take the modulus in. I didn't write here, but we'll see. Then we'll get n to the phi of m power is always congruent to 1 in mod m. Okay. And again, why is this true? I'll skip the proof right now because the purpose of this video is not the proof of the theorem or the corollary. We just want to solve the problem first. So just bear with me. And in fact, we don't really need the Toshian function or corollary to finish our proof for this problem. But I would like to share it right now so that maybe somehow when you have some other problems, you can use it as a tool to help you find the answer. All right, so let's move on and get into our actual proof. Okay, so here's the actual proof. So first we want to show the following expression. We want to prove that n to the seventh power minus n is congruent to zero mod two. How do we do it? Well, again, by Fermat's little theorem, and yes, I use lowercase l on purpose so that we're not going to confuse with the last theorem. So by Fermat's little theorem, if n is a multiple of two, in other words, if the GCD of n and two is equal to two. Why, again, because two is a prime. That's the only way. 
if it's not equal to one, then <clears throat> if n is a multiple of two, let me write this way. Then of course, n to the seventh power is also congruent to zero mod two, which is actually congruent to n. So we already finished half of it. So now what happens if n is not a multiple of two? If the GCD of n and two is congruent to one or is equal to one, then by the little theorem, we get that n has to be congruent to one mod n. Uh, not n, mod 2. And again, why? Because we're taking 2 to, well, we're taking n to 2 minus 1 power. We're taking p minus 1. So we just show that it is congruent to 1. Then in this case, of course, n to the 7th power is going to be congruent to n itself because they're both 1. So this part is actually the easiest to show, but also <clears throat> is the hardest to explain use, uh, nicely with the theorem. But anyway, we already finished one part. Now we just have two left. Next, we're going to show that this expression is congruent to zero in mod three. In other words, it's a multiple of three. How are we going to do it? We're going to play the same game. So set into two cases. If n is, of course, uh, it's a multiple of three. Well, let me write this way. Well, it doesn't matter. If it's a multiple of three, then of course it's congruent to zero mod three, right? Then clearly, n to the 7th power is just congruent to 0 to the 7th power, which is equal to 0 in mod 3. So we just also notice that if we show that n is a multiple of whatever prime it is, then no matter what power we raise on, on to n, we'll always get 0 back in, in, in mod in that prime, okay, after we divide by that prime. Good. So this part, not too special and not too difficult to, uh, to think of. So now we are going to consider that if n is not congruent to zero mod three. In other words, now we are saying that n is not a multiple of three. So usually we need to list out two more cases because we have n could be one mod three, meaning the remainder is one, or n is two mod three, meaning the remainder is two. But we don't have to do this. We can just combine the two cases together because now we have the Fermat's little theorem. By the little theorem, it says that n, for any n that we have, the n to the p minus 1 power, where p is the prime number that we're dividing by in this case, will be always congruent to 1. So in this case, since we're dividing by 3, let me use another column. I'm going to use green here. We're now saying that <clears throat> n to the 3 minus 1 power is congruent to 1 by Fermat's little theorem. And how can we <clears throat> simplify the expression on the left? Well, we can just do a subtraction. 3 minus 1 is 2, meaning that n squared is always congruent to 1 in mod 3. So, this, in this case, we have n to the 7th power minus n, which is our initial expression. It's now going to be reduced, let me write it this way. It is equal to n to the 6th power times n, well, 6 plus 1, okay, minus n. And this, we can rewrite n to the 6th power into, of course, n squared to the 3rd power by the exponent property, and of course, don't forget to multiply by this extra n, and then minus the other n that we have. Great. Now, the next step is how we are going to use the little theorem helping us to solve. So since we just found that n squared is congruent to 1 mod 3, we will now say that this part here is going to be reduced down to 1 to the third power, which is 1 times n minus n. And of course, don't forget, now we're doing it in mod 3 meaning that we're going to, we're dividing this by three and trying to find the remainder part only, okay? So in this case, we just need to finish our proof. And one, minus, one times n is n, minus n is zero. So we just show that in both cases, no matter n is a multiple of three or not, the expression n to the seventh power minus n is always a multiple of three. In other words, it is always congruent to zero mod three after dividing by three. Great. So we're almost done. There's one more case left, which is, we want to show that it also works when we divide by 7. So again, if n is a multiple of 7, clearly n is just congruent to 0 mod 7. In other words, there's no remainder after we divide by 7, so if we raise it to a 7 power, it still has no remainder. So that case is very easy to verify, so I'm going to skip it. Let's jump into the other case. For a case when n is not a multiple of 7, once again, we're going to use the little theorem. 
by Fermat's little theorem, we get that n to the 7 minus 1 power is congruent to 1 mod 7, since 7 is a prime number. And how do we simplify the left-hand side? Again, we can just subtract it. 7 minus 1 is 6, meaning that on the left-hand side, this expression is equal to n to the 6th power. Good. Then, we can finish our proof quickly. n to the 7th power minus n. Again, n to the 7th power is the same as n to the 6th plus 1 power. So we can rewrite as n to the 6th power times n minus n. Now, substitute this relation here from the Lith theorem. We get that n to the 6th power is congruent to 1. And then, don't forget to write down everything else in mod 7. Then, we just need to finalize it. 1 times n is n, minus n is 0. Meaning that the expression n to the 7th power minus n is also congruent to 0 mod 7. Meaning the expression is also multiple of 7. So we already proved that n to the 7th power minus n is a multiple of 2, 3, and also 7. Meaning now, if we can put every, you know, all the factors back using the idea that we have introduced, we just proved that for all integers n, the expression n to the 7th power minus n is always a multiple of the product, which is 42. That's it. Hope you, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so that you can, boom, <clears throat> you can find all my other videos. And also remember to turn on the notification so that whenever I have new videos, um, you won't miss any. So I will see you guys next time.